Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a maximum length sequence, which is a form of PN sequence when you are given a sequence generator. I'll read out the question now. Generate the maximum length sequence for the sequence generator given below and verify the properties of the same. Assume the initial sequence of the shift register as 1010. Now, looking at the maximum length sequence generator here, we have the length of the shift register equal to 4 because it is the number of flip flops in the shift register. Further, the feedback is taken from the outputs of the first and the last flip flop, and we have a common clock for all of the flip flops. So, let us start the solution here. The solution starts first by identifying the length of the shift register which we just said is equal to the number of flip flops in the shift register and it is denoted by m and is equal to 4. Therefore, the length of the maximum length sequence that will be generated which is represented here by L you should note it is also represented as capital N in most of the textbooks and is given by 2 power m minus 1. In our case m is equals to 4 therefore 2 power 4 minus 1 is equals to 15. This will be the length of the maximum length sequence or the PN sequence that will be generated. Let us now look at how this sequence is generated. This is the table that illustrates the same. I have column 1 representing the clock, then I have 4 columns representing the output of each of these flip flops, then I have a feedback path as you can see the feedback is the output of first flip flop and that of the last flip flop. Now I have represented the output of each flip flop as x1, x2, x3 and x4. So the subscript represents the corresponding number of the flip flop. x1 is the output of the first flip flop, x2 is for the second, x3 is for the third and lastly x4 is for the fourth flip flop. So the feedback is a modulo 2 addition of the output of the first and the fourth flip flop and that is why when you look at the feedback column you can see it is x1 plus x4 but it is a modulo 2 addition. Lastly, the output is equal to the output generated by the fourth flip flop at the end of the clock cycle. So, output is nothing but x4. Now, in our question, we are given the initial content of the shift register be 1010. You can take any sequence here, but all zeros should never be considered as the initial content. Now, what happens in the maximum length sequence generator is at every clock input, the content of the shift register are shifted to the right. Therefore, the content of flip flop 1 will move on to 2, the 1 in 2 will move on to 3 and the 1 in 3 will move on to 4 and lastly, the contents of flip flop 4 will be generated as the output sequence for the corresponding clock. This is what we have shown here. So, at the very first clock, the contents are 1010 and at the end of this clock, we have to now compute the feedback. Feedback is x1 plus x4, which is a modulo 2 addition. So, 1 plus 0 is 1. The output is nothing but x4. So, I will simply copy the content of x4 into output column. In the next clock, that is in clock 2, the feedback has to come back to the first flip flop, which will at the end of this clock become the output of the first flip flop. So, I have to simply write this here. And the next three column contents have to be the first three column contents of the previous clock. So, 101 has to be written here. This has to be done every single clock. So, for the clock 2, we have the content 1101. Feedback is x1 plus x4. 1 plus 1 modulo 2 addition is 0. Output is nothing but x4, so which is 1 again. In the next clock, I once again take the feedback to the x1 column and I shift the previous contents of x1, x2 and x3 to the current x2, x3 and x4. Once again, I compute the feedback. Here it is 0 plus 0, therefore 0 and the output is the x4 content which is 0. In this fashion, you have to continue for the number of clock equal to the length of the sequence. Please note the length of the sequence is 15 here. So, you need to continue this operation for the clock number equal to 15. And this is where you are supposed to stop because since PN sequence is a periodic sequence, when you come to clock number 16, which is clock number L plus 1, you will get the content of the feedback shift register reset to the original value which we had started at the beginning of operation. So, when you come to clock number L plus 1, you need to stop the computation. 
that is why I have shown it with a different color and I have said at clock 16 the contents repeat and you need to stop the operation. Now, where do we find the PN sequence then? It is in the output column. So, we have to now write the sequence from top to bottom. So, the maximum length sequence is 0 1 0 double 1 double 0 1 triple 0 4 ones. Right. That is about the generation of the maximum length sequence. Coming back to the question, you can see we are also asked to verify the properties of the maximum length sequence generated, which is what I will be discussing next. Particularly, the maximum length sequence has three interesting properties. The first one is called as the balance property. What does the balance property say? The number of ones in the sequence generated is one greater than the number of zeros. This is our sequence. If you count the number of ones in this sequence, it is equal to 8. And when you count the number of zeros, it is equal to 7. And since the number of ones is 1 greater than the number of zeros, we can now say the balance property is verified. Moving on to the second property, which is called as the run property. A run is subsequent appearance of similar looking symbols in the PN sequence. It can be of length 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. For example, in the sequence we have here, we start with a bit 0, then we have a 1. There is no similarity between these two symbols. Therefore, the first bit will be considered as an independent run of length 1. Coming to the second bit and third bit, they are once again different. So, the second bit will once again be considered as a run of length 1. Coming to the third and fourth, once again they are different. So, the third bit will also be a run of length 1. Coming to the fourth and fifth, they are similar. Whenever we have similar symbols appearing one after the other, we have to combine all of them to create one run. And the length of that corresponding run will be equal to the number of bits in that run. So, here we have two ones, we will combine them to create one run and this will be a run of length 2. Then we have two zeros, it will once again be a run of length 2. Then we have one which will be a run of length 1, then we have 3 zeros, so this will be a run of length 3 and lastly we have 4 ones and this will be a run of length 4. Now, after identifying the different number of runs, let us now calculate how many total number of runs are available in the sequence generated. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so total number of runs is 8. Coming to the run property, the property says, among the total number of runs, one half of the runs will be of length 1, one fourth of the runs will be of length 2, one eighth of the runs will be of length 3, one sixteenth of the runs are of length 4 and etc. So, let us now verify that property. Please note, I have to take these fractions as long as they make meaningful fractions. Otherwise, we can omit them. Now, coming to the number of runs of length 1, we have totally 4. You can see we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, this is also equal to half of the total number of runs, which is 8 divided by 2. Therefore, this condition is correct. Now, when we move on to the number of runs of length 2, if we calculate, we have 1 and 2. We have 2 runs and the property says 1 fourth of the runs are of length 2. So, 2 and 2 are equal. Therefore, this condition is also verified. Moving on, number of runs of length 3 should be equal to 1 eighth of the total number of runs. So, it is supposed to be 1 and when we go back to the sequence and check the number of runs of length 3, we have only 1. Therefore, this condition is also verified. Now, I should not verify for the number of runs of length 4 because that should be equal to 1 16 the total number of runs. But our sequence is only having 15 bits, therefore that condition need not be tested. Therefore, we can say that the sequence verifies the run property. Lastly, we move on to the correlation property. The correlation property says we are supposed to compute the correlation of the sequence. Here we will represent the maximum length sequence by Cn and Cn minus k represents the same Pn sequence with a k bits of rotation added to the sequence. So, the autocorrelation is given by Rc of k equals 1 divided by capital N where N please note is the total length of the maximum length sequence. Previously, I have denoted it by L, but you should note L and N are the same values here. 
So, the autocorrelation is 1 by n, summation n varying from 1 to capital N, Cn, Cn minus k, where Cn is the maximum length sequence and C of n minus k is the maximum length sequence shifted right by k bits. After computing this, we have to verify whether the value Rc of k satisfies this condition. That is, when the number of shifts introduced into the maximum length sequence is an integer multiple of the length of the maximum length sequence, then the autocorrelation is said to be 1. On the other hand, when the number of shifts that are introduced is not an integer multiple value of the length of the sequence, then the autocorrelation is minus 1 by n. If the sequence generated satisfies this equation, then we say the sequence satisfies the correlation property. I will start with the case when the number of shifts is not an integer multiple value of the length of the sequence. For this particular condition, I should find the autocorrelation function rc of k equal to minus 1 by n. Let us start with this. I will take the number of shifts which is represented here by k equals to 5. I will start by first writing the pn sequence which is represented here by cn. Then I will write the polar form of the same. This is done by replacing 0 by minus 1 and 1 by plus 1. To compute the autocorrelation, I will be using the polar form of the sequence as given here. Then I have the shifted sequence Cn minus 5. This is obtained by shifting the contents of the Pn sequence right side by 5 times. So, the last 5 digits in the Pn sequence will become the first 5 digits here and the rest of the digits will simply shift right. Once again, I will be writing the polar form of the same. So, we have polar form of Cn minus 5. Now, to compute autocorrelation, I will multiply the contents of Cn and Cn minus k, which is given here. So, I have Cn and Cn minus 5 given here. And to obtain the multiplication result, I have to simply multiply the corresponding bit positions. That is, minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 is plus 1. Plus 1 into plus 1 is plus 1 minus 1 into plus 1 is minus 1 and in this fashion you compute the rest of the sequence. After computing the product of the two sequences, I will apply the formula that is given here that is 1 by n summation Cn into Cn minus k which is what is shown here. So, 1 by n is 1 by 15 then we have summation of the multiplication of the pn sequence and its shifted version. So, this complete sequence what I have which is a product of cn and cn minus 5 is rewritten here. Now, when I look into this particular part, I have minus 1 appearing 8 times and plus 1 appearing 7 times. So, this complete term reduces to minus 1. Therefore, the RHS now reduces to minus 1 by 15, which is equals to minus 1 by n, which is what is the condition that should be obtained for k not equal to l into n condition. So, this part of the equation is verified. Let us now move on to the other condition when the number of shifts is equal to an integer multiple value of the length of the sequence. For this case, I am going to consider the number of shifts equal to 15, which is equal to the length of the sequence. You can also take it as 30, 45, 60, etc. Please note, the number of shifts should be an integer multiple of the length of the sequence. So, once again, I am going to write the pn sequence and its polar form. Then, when I come to the shifted sequence, the overall idea behind k equals to l into n is that when you rotate the pn sequence by an integer multiple value of the length of the sequence, you will obtain the same exact sequence once again. Therefore, when I multiply cn with cn minus 15, I will obtain only once everywhere because we have the same bits positioned one below the other. You can see minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1, plus 1 into plus 1 is plus 1 and this goes on for the rest of the sequence. Lastly, I will once again calculate the autocorrelation which is equals to 1 by 15 into sum of all these values. Here you can see we have 15 values, all of them being plus 1, so the total here is 15. So, 15 divided by 15, we will obtain 1. Therefore, the condition when k is equal to L into n equals to 1 is also verified. So, now we can say the correlation property is verified. Right, that is how you generate the maximum length sequence and verify the properties of the same. 
If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.